is the belief that things are bad. They'll always be bad. They'll always, and they were always bad. And the only times you ever thought otherwise, you were fooling yourself. That's the power of darkness. And that's what we try to use our work to help dispel that. And again, what you're doing is to shine a light in the darkness. To me, awareness is the first step in healing and the awareness that we have, that light is already there within us. We just need to stop obscuring it. I was in Costco last night, picking up medicine for my very sick dog. And I noticed in just over, you know, surrounding the pharmacy, every single product seemed to be a product to help a symptom of something. There was um, eye drops for if your you know, eyes are dry or itchy or painful. There was lots and lots of different types of ibuprofens. There was muscular rubs and icy hot and- And acids, right? And then exactly. Yes, yes, yes. So, and it, and I didn't walk any further because I was waiting at the pharmacy, but surrounding me was just everything to treat a symptom for something. And it got me thinking about our conversation today and uh, knowing that, that uh, you mentioned your work with president Clinton, his own uh, health, but that you've also uh, worked uh, with Obama and you were on that White House advisory group, uh, Governor Newsom on the um, brain test on Alzheimer's disease prevention and preparedness. And I, I guess I, I'm just, it, it's obviously big business to deal with sick people, big, big business. But what what have you seen changed and how much hope do we have uh, for all the work that you've done 43 years of it. And sometimes I feel like nobody's, no, the doctors that I see, they've never heard of it. They don't know what I'm talking about. What, I want to talk more hope. Yeah, <laughs> and, no, and, and if you think this advice and these suggestions and the direction that you're talking about to us today are going to reach the masses. Yeah, well, it's a really good question. You know, 86% of the $3.8 trillion we spent last year in this country for healthcare, which is mostly sick care, are for treating chronic diseases that are often not only preventable, but even yeah. reversible yeah. at a fraction of the cost. We did a study with Mutual of Omaha where we found that they saved almost $30,000 per patient in the first year because uh, almost 80% of people who were told they needed a stent or a bypass could choose my reversing heart disease program as a direct alternative, and it was a lot cheaper. Uh, we did a study with Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. They found they cut their costs in half in the first year and by fourfold in the first year when they looked at the subset of people that they'd spent at least $25,000 on in the prior year. So if we really want to make better care available to more people at lower costs, then we need to treat the cause, you know, the turn off the faucet around the sink that's overflowing, which to a much larger degree than I had once depreciated are the lifestyle choices we make each day. And so there, but you know, the, when, 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 as I mentioned earlier, when someone's diagnosed with a life-threatening condition, there's an openness to change that, um, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, well, it may be hard to change, but boy, I'm hurting so badly. Let me try this weird stuff. And then they start to feel so much better so quickly. Their chest pain, again, often goes away. And for someone who can't, you know, walk across the street without getting chest pain or make love with their spouse or play with their kids or go back to work without getting angina or chest pain. And usually within a few weeks, they can do all those things. Um, then they say, well, I like eating junk food, but not that much, you know, because when I gain it's so much more than when I give up. One of the patients I talk about in the Undo It book is a guy named Robert Troyhertz, who's an internal medicine doc himself. And he had such a massive heart attack that his heart was pumping so poorly that uh, he was told the only thing that could save his life would be a heart transplant. And he went through my program on reversing heart disease that we trained at UCLA for nine weeks to get in better shape for the heart transplant while they were looking for a donor. And his heart disease improved so much in nine weeks, he didn't need a heart transplant anymore. So like, what's the more radical intervention here? You know, getting a new heart or eat well, move more, stress less, love more. Besides the fact that it saves a million and a half dollars immediately, plus another, you know, the fact that you're not on immunosuppressive drugs for the rest of your life. So I think we're at a place with the medical system that is broken, you know, in the same way that it's a crisis. You know, we, it's not sustainable in its current form. Uh, it's going to, you know, bankrupt the GDP, which is too much. And the, you know, trying to you manage care and limit access and ration and so on is just not politically viable. And it's not really addressing the, it's just another form of bypass. We're not treating the cause. And so I'm optimistic by choice. You know, again, having chosen not to commit suicide, I am choosing to be optimistic because so much of that can be self-fulfilling in either direction, but also because I think there's evidence for that. Now that Medicare is paying for this, uh, it's possible for doctors to make a living doing this. 
Again, if you change medical practice, you change, you change reimbursement, you change medical practice and even medical education. Lifestyle medicine is to me the fastest growing field in medicine today. I think it's the most exciting through the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and the Plantrition Conference and other groups like that, the International Plant-Based Nutrition Conference. I, I see a lot of hope here. And I think that, you know, yes, darkness is rising in so many different areas of our lives, politically and otherwise, but so is the light. And I, um, I again, the fact that it took me 16 years to work with Medicare to get them to cover our program, my, as I get older, my event horizon is getting longer. And so I think things actually are moving in a good direction. Are they moving as quickly as I would like? I mean, you have Eric Adams now, the mayor of New York, who's a vegan, you know, who uh, I've worked with. Uh, Cory Booker, who I've worked with, is uh, a vegan. You know, Adam Schiff is a vegan. Uh, you know, some of my uh, uh, favorite people are, are, are doing that. You know, some of the Snoop Dogg, you know, uh, the rapper just came out with a vegan hot dog. It's becoming cool to be eat a plant-based diet. Um, I, I think that um, the, the, the signs are everywhere that um, this is a trend that hasn't even, a wave that hasn't even begun to crest. So it makes me very optimistic. You, you, your Medicare, that's huge, having Medicare cover your program. And Dati uh, and Switch for Good have been working to change the system in terms of the dietary guidelines. We talked about doctors changing medical, the, you talked about the medical system changing how much nutrition they get in school. Are there any other systemic changes because you've worked on these commissions and advisory groups and brain trusts with, with pol political, very high up in politics? Where, and subsidies, of course, to dairy companies, that, that could change too. Are there any prescriptions you'd give to the government in terms of, or our, our maybe culture as a whole, uh, so that we can systemically change the way we look at health? Yeah, I've been working for many, many years with the government uh, advisory groups and informally and formally consulting with some of the, the, the key leaders on, on both sides of the aisle at the highest levels. Uh, I've also worked with a lot of CEOs of corporations. Back in 1999, I was giving a talk at the World Economic Forum in Davos, and I was introduced to uh, uh, Jim Skinner, who was the CEO of McDonald's at the time. And I said, you know, you've got 43 million customers a day, um, you've got nothing on the menu that's healthy. You're going to be the next big tobacco. So for your own survival, you should have some healthy items on there just so you can say, hey, we're giving people a spectrum of choice. And, you know, for the what they call the veto vote, you know, for the one person in the family that doesn't eat meat, you know, you could give them something so the whole family doesn't go someplace else. So he, he agreed. And so I work with them and we developed these really wonderful salads and they were really quite good. Um, but it was very disappointing because the, because of the subsidies, the, you know, the meat is subsidized, the plant-based foods are not, mm -hmm. uh, and they also don't price in the real cost of society. So the salad was five ninety five, dollars the burger's 99 mm -hmm. cents. So if you're on a fixed income, you get a lot more calories for your dollar by eating junk food, which made no sense. So they reduced the amount of salads on the menu to almost nothing. But then I worked with the heads of other major uh, corporations to try to get them to make healthier foods. So to some degree, that's working. But I think that more and more, you know, there's a, an awareness in the government that we need to really look at what's causing this $3.8 trillion in healthcare costs. It is really mostly sick care costs. Uh, you know, I've been working for many years uh, to change the school lunch program. You know, Neil Barnard has done some great work in that area too. I, I just think that there's, you know, on, on the one hand, you know, $100 billion were spent uh, several years ago for stents and bypasses. The last year we have data on that. Uh, that are uh, essentially, there are now eight randomized trials that show that stents and angioplasties in stable patients don't work. They don't prolong life. They don't prevent heart attacks. They don't even reduce angina. They're dangerous, invasive, expensive, and largely ineffective. And yet something as simple as lifestyle changes can actually not only prevent, but even reverse a disease at a fraction of the cost. And as we talked about earlier, the only side effects are good ones. So I think there's more and more awareness of this. And to me, again, awareness is always the first step. So it's taking longer than I would like, but I do think things are moving in a good direction. Hey folks, okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. 
We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.